Hi, praise the Lord. This is Pastor Sue Monene, the Tua Tua Pastor. Our Tua Tua being our coded language for godly sex in marriage. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you for your support. Today we are learning about how to balance prayer, fasting, and Tua Tua in marriage. And I believe this is a very good message for those who are married because most people wonder if they are praying and fasting, especially in the month of January, where people want to dedicate their lives to prayer and fasting. They wonder if my husband is not born again, if my husband is born again and he doesn't want, you know, uh, he doesn't want fasting and he wants us to tua tua. What are we supposed to do? Vice versa, there could be a husband who wants to pray and fast January, but maybe the wife is not ready to actually pray and fast. And so there's all this, you know, variety of people in marriages. And today we want to understand how do we incorporate prayer and fasting and tua tua in marriage. And I want to say that fasting is an intention act of voluntarily you know, abstaining from food and drinks so that you can naturally give yourself to God in prayer and in fasting. And I want to say that uh, this occurs because of a spiritual need. You need spiritual intervention. You need empowerment from above so that you can be able to be spiritually alert, to be able to run your ear well. And I want to believe this is a message very timely for all the born again Christian and all the fraternity in the, in the, in the world. And so this is something that is so much practiced in January. And so this is very important for us to run. What does the Bible say about prayer, fasting, and tua tua? In the book of Matthew 6, verse 16 and 18, Jesus was the first person to actually teach about fasting. And he said that fasting must be done to God only and not to men. So when you are fasting, you must know this is a personal initiative. This is something you voluntarily give yourself. This is something you give yourself willingly so that you avoid the natural pleasure of food and drinks and other activities like Tua Tua so that you can give yourself fully to God. And I want to say that uh, this is very important because this is when you begin to pray and to fellowship with God more in his word and also fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit so that your spirit man is energized. And I want to say that um, fasting can actually mean, you know, avoiding some food or drinking. It depends with, you know, the personal preference that you feel you are comfortable with. So when you are fasting and praying, you, you know, you, you, should not, um, you should not feel like fasting should change God. In fact, the purpose of fasting is to change you. It is not to change God. Because in the book of Hebrews, the Bible says that God is yesterday, today, and forevermore. So we don't fast because we want to change God. We fast because we want to change ourselves, you know, using the power of God. So that our spirit, our soul, and our mind can be actually in line with God's word. And so just like prayer... Prayer does not change things. Prayer changes you. And when you are changed, then you are ready to change things. So that's very, very, very important. And I want to speak that, um, you know, when we give ourselves to prayer and fasting, this is very, very, very important. And we need to know this is a spiritual act that every born again person should actually endeavor to do every often, even not only in January, but even as the month continues, as the prompting of the Holy Spirit keeps coming in you, endeavor to actually pray and fast. And so I want to speak about a few fastings that are actually in the Bible, and we're going to see that. Number one, we want to look at, you know, supernatural fasting. Supernatural fasting, this is a fasting that is in the book of Exodus 34, verse 28, where Moses was called by God to fasting in the mountain so that he could go there and write the Ten Commandments. And the Bible says that he was there for 40 days and 40 nights, and this man of God never ate or drank anything. 
And so God had called him. So some of these fastings that are actually for many days, you need to hear the voice of God very clearly. Jesus was also an example of the same. Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. And the Bible says after that he was hungry. So I want to say that it depends with the grace. It depends with how the capacity, the inner capacity, your spiritual capacity to actually know how to handle your fasting in the best way possible. There was also this woman of God in the book of Esther when there was a decree that all the Jews would have been, you know, killed. And Esther called a fast war the Jews for three days. They fought all the animals and all the human beings. They, they fasted for three days without drinking and without eating. And the Bible says that it was not the right time for Esther to go and see the king. But because he prayed and fasted, the Bible says that he got favor with the king and he was able to go and see the king a time that was not appropriate. And God gave him favor. And guess what? Prayer and fasting turned away the captivity, turned away the death that was to occur toward the Jews. We also talk about fasting for seven days. There are people who fast for seven days. And I want to say that if you are going to go without, you know, without food, then from the seventh day, it is important for you to actually drink even if it is water because your body organs needs to keep running. And so from the seventh day of fasting, it is very important even medically to actually drink water or drink something so that your body can be able to eliminate, you know, the waste that is actually accumulating in you. And so it is very important to know that fasting is not only spiritual, but it also has physical benefits. We are also going to see fasting that was actually done by Daniel for 21 days. The man of God never ate and drank. And the Bible says the very day he prayed, God had his prayers. So Daniel showed us that you can also pray for 21 days. And when we talk about prayer and fasting, there can never be fasting without prayer. So every fasting must be accompanied by prayer. And every fasting must be accompanied by quality time to study the word of God, quality time to pray the scriptures. In other words, your prayer during prayer and fasting must be full of scriptures. So, and then another thing, you must create quality time to actually meditate the word of God, removing the word of God from your mind and actually driving it back to your spirit. And then you must also affirm that word in your life and then speak it forth in your life so that it can bring physical manifestation to your life. And so I want to say that fasting is a very important spiritual act. And every born again person must begin with this in the month of January. Because how you begin the foundation of the year matters how you're going to finish the year 2020 and the years beyond. And so this is very, very, very important topic that we are learning today. And we want to look at the truth that is based on the word of God. And so it is advisable that when you are praying and fasting, you know, read the word of God, study the word of God, avoid you know, talking so much, avoid so much of, uh, of people, set yourself, even if it means going to the church, set yourself, even if it is in your house, if there are no much interruption, other people go for prayer centers to actually pray, depending with where you feel comfortable, you can pray and fast. For example, there are women, when they tell their husband they want to go to a mountain to go and pray, their husbands are not comfortable for them to leave the house. You can set your time to just pray within the house and especially so if you have children when they have gone back to school and so it is very important for us to know what is the appropriate time for you to pray and fast and i want to believe that this topic is going to actually help us so that we can be able to move to the next to the to the to the next level which we want to discuss about the benefits of prayer and fasting between a husband and a wife and i want to say this that if you are born again and your husband is not born again. Don't punish your ex, ex, husband by saying that, you know, the, the pastor or wherever you go to church, we were told we be praying and fasting. And so you deny your husband to a tour just because you are fasting. Unless you have agreed. Like Pastor Sue is married to a pastor. We can agree with pastor that we are going to abstain to a tour for three days, for seven days. 
for 14 days, for 21 days, for 40 days, so that we can give ourselves to prayer and fasting. And that's what the Bible says in the book of Second, uh, in the book of First Corinthians, First Corinthians uh, 7 from verse 2 to 5, that when a husband and a wife are praying and fasting, there must be a consent. In other words, you must agree. So if we have, you have not agreed with your husband, you are the one who has actually, you know, felt in your heart and in your spirit that you'd want to fast. Kindly don't force your partner. Kindly don't deny them to a tour. And thinking that uh, because of having to a tour with your husband, this will defile you. This will actually datify you. This one will actually make God not to hear your prayers. It is not true. I want to let you know that when, as long as you are married, there is nothing wrong as, um, as long as you have agreed to actually, you know, have uh, time to pray and then come back. The Bible says come back quickly so that the devil does not tempt you, you know, through, you know, lack of self-control. So it depends with you and your husband. How do you want it? Kindly discuss about it and make sure that you agree on the modalities so that no one is oppressing the other. But I want to say this. Even if your wife demands to a tour when you are praying and fasting, that does not hinder your prayer from God. Because actually, to a tour is a sacred thing from the Lord. So I don't want us to have that mentality that because I had to a tour with my husband, probably my, my prayer for one week, for two weeks, is actually in vain. It is not true. Because as long as you are doing it in the context of marriage, and you are not doing outside marriage, those prayers, the Lord will hear them. I want you to join me in the next video as we continue with this topic. And before I go, I would want you to like, to comment, and share, and stay tuned for part two of this message. God bless you.